This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, oh, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! I'm guess. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations, everyone. As something that can just date this video, I just saw Star Wars Episode Nine for the first time in theaters. And I don't care what any of you haters say, I loved it. Probably my number three favorite Star Wars movie. But I'm also still riding off the high of seeing it for the first time. So, g give it a while and maybe I'll be like, Well, actually, it's probably like <laughs> down there with uh, Revenge of the Sith. But... And I worked all day at the wedding center. Yeah! And everyone ran out of wine glasses and we had to find them for like three hours. Anyhow, that that, that's day. our that's our backstories. Yep. Let's continue Turnabout of Ways. We're at the end part two. And remember, we accidentally oh. didn't see the quiz, so it just pulls this up right now. Already got pizza without me. What? I thought I thought Dad said you got pizza after Star Wars. We went to a pizza place, but I got a burger. Oh. <laughs> you got food out without me? Yes. I'm very sad. I know there's nothing you could do about that. You <laughs> couldn't go to the movie because you had to work. I couldn't go to the movie. You're the one who's making the monies while I'm just sitting there like, this is a good uh, movie. Yeah, I'm the one making the monies, Mr. Computer Programmer. <laughs> oh, I'm not making the monies today. Actually, I am. It's paid vacation. Paid holiday. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> get, <laughs> I don't get that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Francisco's just like, shut up. You play. March 15th, 2 11 a.m. <laughs> Fiat from Neutralis Lobby it is late at night. I can't believe it, sir! Extraterritoriality! Yes. And there was nothing we can really do about that. In the end, we didn't have enough authority to bring him to justice. I can't believe that even though we know he's the boss, we can't lay a finger on him! I know. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, sorry to skip out on you, but I've got some business to take care of. If we can't even give an evil guy like him a slap on the wrist, then what the heck were laws created for? What good are they? If the law can't help us, then I'll go with, I'll go with the Yadagarasu and take care of myself. Take care of this, myself. Oh, also take care of yourself. <laughs> Maybe. Take care of yourself. Also, I like how it's still like a little extra loud from last time. I like the, this volume yeah. now. You can hear it better. Don't you dare turn the volume down again. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth! Sorry, that was a bit too harsh, but the music is so good in this game. <laughs> Edgeworth, like Goofus, turns the volume way, way up. up. I turn the- actually, I don't. When you I, don't? When I wear the noise-canceling headphones, I put the volume like pretty much as close to zero as I can, and it's still loud. I know how you feel, sir. We're trying to take on an ambassador, after all. And he did tell us earlier to get out of the theater. This is kind of their country, I guess. But I feel like I've been slapped across the face for just doing my job! What am I going to do? Should I retreat for now and formulate a better plan of attack? Come on, everyone! We can't give up yet! Okay. I want you to think about something for a sec. We've never let up for even a second, and as long as we don't stop investigating, we might find the rotten treasure hidden here! She's right! Come on, Mr. Edgeworth! You're right, Kay. Very well, let us reopen the investigation and see what we find. Come on, Kay. Right behind you! Francisco has not said a word. Okay, then I'll go check out the ball a bit more, sir. And I have something I need to investigate further in Alabast. I thought Alba was like, get out! <laughs> uh, he doesn't hate Francisca. Uh, I mean, she's part of like our team, though. Now then, before I gather any more information, I should do a bit of housekeeping. What? Passion flowers data erased from my organizer. But we're keeping the hot dog box because that's gonna be important. Beatrice, in in reality, lobby. all that we we're gonna do. Oh. Ambassador Alba seemed agitated over something. I sense that there's something he doesn't want us to investigate. Look at him head on. <laughs> With his he eyes looks open. Younger. But at the same time, like, not. <laughs> yeah. He looks like Von Karma's long-lost brother. Actually, wait, yeah, I think that now his portrait is replaced. Yep. He doesn't quite look like a turtle. Though. Ambassador of Alabas, but is actually the Rain Leader. Has extraterritorial light rights. In, in reality, the re- Um, what was I gonna say? Crap. <gasps> Before- Oh, no, the reason that we're keeping the hot dogs is because later, the only way we're gonna bring down the Mafia boss is to bribe him with them. <laughs> You'd be, be like, like, hot dogs! What'd you do it for a Scooby, Scooby snack? snack? Okay. okay. He goes to jail for a Scooby. <laughs> I wonder why. 
There are two special circumstances that surround the Ambassador. First, the Embassy itself has extraterritorial rights. If something happens on Alabastian's soil, we are unable to legally prosecute him. Cool! Sounds like Embassies are the perfect place to steal whatever you want! And Murder Damask 2 run a smuggling operation and make counterfeit bills, apparently. But I thought all of the counterfeiting was done by Mr. Cochin and Babal. Yes, he apparently used the Embassy's coupon printing press to do it. But I mean... That's just for coupons, but they can also print realistic Ben Franklin bills. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that Babal and Alabas have Ben Franklin on their bills? <laughs> he is such a great guy. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think they would pick him for I America. watched Liberty's Kids when I was young. He was no, played by Walter no, Cronkite. Picked, it was who would, who would you pick in America okay. that if you didn't know anything about American history? You just knew George oh, Washington America, America's sure. a place. You don't know anything about American history, but you know George Washington. To me, I would be like, people would pick like someone current, either the current president. Oh, if you don't know any or, of the history. Or if it was like, oh, who's famous from America? <laughs> uh, I'm actually kind of surprised Donald Trump hasn't been like, Let's, we're gonna put my face in the hundred dollar bill. This is gonna be great. Everyone yeah, knows my face. Maybe. <laughs> Otherwise, like, I don't know. People would probably put someone like Taylor Swift on their bills because she's no. popular and recognizable one of the, across one of the, the world. One of the coolest things I've ever seen is they were going to make a Harriet Tubman bill. Yeah, no, I was so down for, for that. For, yeah, so down for that. She's awesome. Uh, the original co concept, which they didn't use, like the one they use is just her portrait. Like, hmm. The original concept was her with a gun. It was so badass. These are the only ones we accept in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> what bill was it for? It was going to be 20? the 20. Replace well, they Andrew took out Jackson. Andrew Jackson. That's, I'm actually okay with that, and I think yeah. he'd be okay with that too, because like he was all like, "The banks are evil. Gotta get rid of the banks." <laughs> and the then they and then they evil. put his face on the money. This is just Edgeworth's brain as <laughs> he points. But it's the same story over there, anyway. The ball also has extraterritorial rights, which brings me to my next point: the ambassador's extraterritorial rights. Those rights are effective even in our own country. Really? No matter what happens, he can never be tried in our courts. He retains some very special rights, indeed. Basically, no matter what wrongs he may commit, we can't bring him to trial here. So, we can do it elsewhere. It would be in uh, Alabast. It couldn't be in any other country? He, if he does anything, if, he, if he's suspected of being tried for criminal activity, it will be in Alabast. That's dumb, though, because if, if that's how it works in the real world, you could absolutely have enough authority to bribe lawyers and or judges to Especially swing if you're you in away. a corrupt country. If you're in a corrupt country or if you have money. I'm actually not, I'm not sure if that is how it works in real life. I don't think I don't that really is know. how it works, but it would explain a lot. So I guess we don't really stand a chance, huh? Do we? Hmm... We might stand a chance if we can somehow nullify either one of his special rights. You just, like, degrade him so he's no longer an ambassador? Yeah? We've come too far to give up! We must expose Ambassador Alba's misdeeds, Mr. Edgeworth! Yes, of course. And we've gotta find a way to steal the truth and get it out there. For my father's sake. Yes, and we will. I'm going to post on Facebook about how Ambassador Alba is the smuggling ring leader. Post on Reddit. Hey, I uh, need some some support. <laughs> post you it. Make, you make um change.com. Go to the subreddit, ask Reddit, just like, who's the worst person in the world? Ambassador Alba, because he's the leader of the smuggling ring. It goes viral. And Alba's yeah. like, no, bad publicity. No. no. Well, no, isn't there, there was a really weird, there's a website, it's not change.org or something, but it's like, a website where you can raise money for stuff, and if you get enough petitions... Kickstarter? Like, it's not Kickstarter, because that's like for games GoFundMe? It might have been GoFundMe, where you can like put something up, it's like, Ambassador Alba must be overthrown. Donate, <laughs> donate oh, money oh, and support. Oh, I know where you do that. The M&M's website. M&M's suck. Absolutely not. <laughs> Just kidding, M&M's rock. Secret point to overthrow Aladdin. <laughs> what have we talked about Aladdin in every video? <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, Link, if you actually watch this. Link does not watch our videos, let's be real. The reason for Ambassador Alba's nervousness must still be here somewhere. He probably is working. Furthermore, I need to pin down exactly what happened in here. I'll start by thoroughly examining this room for any information I can. <sighs> Mr. Edgeworth, if you don't pay attention, Ambassador Alba's gonna get away! Y yes I know. Now hurry up and do the scream thing you always do! I have no idea what you are talking about. What? You don't? Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about, that thing you do! Are you talking about logic? It doesn't make a shwing sound. 
Yeah, that's it. So hurry up and let's join already. All right, all right. Yes, it does. Yeah. That's not schween, though. Schween. <laughs> oh, I, I guess when you push the button the first time. Yeah. Okay. To be honest, it's been a bit hard to connect everything up until now just by looking. However, I should be able to piece things together if I take another look at my leads. Perhaps now is the time to use logic and reason my way to the truth. Ooh, Steel Samurai's on. Oh, I can't examine that. These flowers were sent by Global Studios. Global Studios? That's where they filmed the Steel Samurai television show. They've been producing hit after hit recently, so the studio is being remodeled. Oh, I read about that in the papers the other day. The mascot of theirs is also getting a facelift too, right? Um, what's its name? You mean Mrs. Monkey? Yeah, I thought that was something like that. You really have a great memory. Ha! Never underestimate my powers of recollection. Yeah, Edgeworth has good recollection, unlike me! Hello, and welcome to the Embassy of Babal. I'm sorry, but I don't really need to enter your country at this time. Thanks, McAfee, for not finding any viruses on my computer. You're the best. Right now, for a limited time here at the Babylon's Embassy, we're offering the very special experience, the Terrifying Fire's Ashes Tour. So how about it, shall I sign you up? We're fine, thanks. We have an investigation to run. My strategy for that guy's voice just talking at the left side of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get away from that man, Kay. Oh, there's that guy. On the orders of Ambassador Alba, no one is allowed into Alabas. We have changed everyone's voice <sighs> five times. But I thought a lady with a whip passed through here not too long ago. She is from Interpol and had the proper paperwork. So while I was reluctant, I had to let her in. Heh. <laughs> Sounds like Francisco, all right. Besides... If I didn't, that whip of hers. Yep, definitely, Francesca. Mm -hmm. Flowers were sent by a variety of people and businesses to celebrate the Goodwill event. Even the Steel Samurai received some flowers from the ambassadors. There are so many bouquets here, it's like a wedding ceremony! I believe the flowers for those who are, are for a slightly different reason. What do you mean? This event was supposed to be like a wedding between all of us and Babal, right? Actually, I believe they're more in a state of divorce. Okay, then. This event was supposed to be their remarriage ceremony. Hmm. I suppose you could call it that. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the... Oh. This was taken just before the two ambassadors gave their oh, bouquets to the Steel Samurai. Ugh. I did not know this picture was here. It's, it, it just showed up now. Oh, it just showed up. Or we can... Was it painted? Why is it so big? They took it. They didn't take it on an iPhone, Marty. They, they had the proper like yeah, the big sh camera. Yeah, the snap, snap shot. Lada was taking snap yeah. shots. But but why would you print it on like I don't know? Uh, I was about to say thirteen by nine, but that's like the size of a brownie pan. Um, <laughs> that's how I remember it anyway. Yep. No, um, it's like that's a... like the size of a poster. Who yeah. would be like, shooping? Okay, here's your poster. Of, like, the Steel Samurai, you guys. This is great. <laughs> um, so, I bet the flowers are important. Hmm. I bet. Wait, is it just my imagination? Or is there something in this picture that I've seen before? I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious-looking nook and cranny. I mean, it's the Steel Samurai. He's got his fingers up! Yep. This would totally be Larry. <laughs> There's that troublemaker standing there smack in the center making two peace signs. Wow, the Steel Samurai stands out even more than the two ambassadors in this picture. Oh, hey, the person playing the Steel Samurai is one of your friends, right? No, I have no idea who he is. Wait, but you just said he! You know which gender he was, so you must know him, right? I beg that you please refrain from talking about that person with me ever again. Okay. Mr. Polano has a really great smile, don't you think? I bet he was really happy that they were going to become Kodopia again. Perhaps. But instead, he became the greatest victim in today's case. An ambassador like him who is always thinking of his country is really to be admired. Yeah, although this happened, I hope they'll be able to reunite the country someday. I hope so as well. But for that to happen, we need to solve this case first. We need to see to it that it, those who would harm the new Kodopia are locked away. And we will! What's with the background? It's like... It's taken in front of their flags. But the flag... 
doesn't have a castle on it, does it? Or uh, like Babal's, Babal's kind of does, because there's the ba butterfly. There's the butterfly, okay. It's behind him, though. Um, hmm, it seems that lilies are at the center of this bouquet, with an inch, with an accent of chamomile. Mac. Wow. I can totally smell the wonderful fragrance. Okay, this is just a picture. Is it like scratches with- Ah, look, I know that! But it's nice to imagine things once in a while, you know? Where's your sense of empathy? If you can smell the fragrance of flowers from a photo, that's more like a hallucination. You don't have to be mean about it. <laughs> Let's just drop this before it's in full bloom. So, can't believe he was pretending to be a harmless old grandpa. Talk about deceptive! I don't suppose anyone expected him to change that drastically. I bet he's thinking of something evil behind that cheery smile. What smile? He's just like... He, he like... He's not smiling at all. He has like no lips. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I do. It's like they're stitched shut. <laughs> Either that or... His lips are that so... <laughs> no, that's face lines. <laughs> I'm trying to do this. <laughs> I, I, do not ever do that again. <laughs> all right, I, <laughs> I, I was trying to make puff out my like, lips like. What no, I was you imagining. were starting to look like an Instagram model combined with those Pringles, yeah. where you put a Pringle on the front of your mouth and a Pringle on the bottom, so you look like a duck. I'd much rather look like that than an Instagram model. We, way too many people. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> okay, please try to remain calm and focused on the on the here and now. That's an interesting way of saying it. Yeah, you're right. Sorry I got all worked up there. Well, the only way we're going to be able to steal the truth is if we keep on investigating. Is there something on his shirt? Ketchup. He was eating samurai dogs. No, no, not that. I'm on Polano's shirt. You see? That's just a right. flower. No, no, wait, is... Why is it sticking out underneath? No, he's wearing a flower. You know, like, people, like, wear the rosettes oh. for, like, weddings and stuff. Oh, what kind of flower, I wonder? I don't know. It appears to be a bouquet of Persian cyclamens and roses. I, I don't know all these flower names. Wow, you even know the exact species? I never would have figured you were an expert on flowers. <sighs> it's all because of those flowers that old lady keeps sending me every month. Yeah. <laughs> Just look at me. I sound like some sort of botanist. So, um, what exactly is this yellow flower here? Hmm, that one? I'm not sure. Is it the one that looks like a clock? What? You don't know? Yes, it is. As far as I can recall, I've never seen a flower like this before. But I feel as though I've seen this shape somewhere before. And now is we that can... the grandfather clock? Um, we can deduce gear? it. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? I think it's connected to the grandfather clock. I don't think we have the grandfather clock as evidence. The closest we would have is the wire, but even then, that's, that's not the clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what got stuck in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how? <laughs> it's like a photo of his <laughs> Um. It doesn't look like a prosecutor's badge. No. No. The body wasn't badly burnt by the fire. <laughs> that was my favorite, was when he fell over backwards. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. So funny. Uh, no. No. Wait. Open. Open the Yadagarasu's key. Shwing! I'm not sure if we can show wing it, but we'll try. We can show wing it. Boom! We discovered this trick seven years ago, and with it we were able to corner Miss Yu. But who would have thought that I'd see this key again after all this time? Uh, turn it. And uh, no, no, it's it doesn't not, look, it doesn't like, look that like that. I thought it would. Anyway, no, it doesn't. That's a big knife. If that's a knife, you know. It could be a big knife. No, that doesn't look right at all. It looks like a fist. See, it's like fist shaped. It kind of looks like that, but it looks too burned. I guess it did burn in the fire. There's a striking flower ornament on the handle of this knife. Compared to the Bobbley's knife's handle, this larger one gives Alabast more presence. Oh, I hang mean, on, hang on. I guess. 
It's a little burned, but... Yeah... What? Could be. You, why did you not deduce oh. that? You backed up too much, bro. Oh, did you want to deduce that? Yeah. Eureka! Eureka! Babal's national symbol is the butterfly, and Alabast is the flower. It would appear that someone is employing the old hide-a-tree-in-the-forest trick. What are you mumbling to yourself about? Wait, what? Handle on this knife. Ah! Yes, it's the handle that was supposed to be on the blade that killed Mr. Cochin. The weapon that killed him was carried through the Fiatrum Neutralis in the very bouquet Ambassador Alba was carrying. Oh my god. Commemorative gosh. photo. Hmm? The flower motif. It looks like one of the flower petals is missing. Oh, and take a look at the weapon itself! It's missing the exact same petal! Then the knife in this photo is most definitely the same as this murder weapon. That was planned. I wonder if he was trying to murder Polano. <laughs> Just like right there. No, not right there! It's There's press everywhere! Agitated Alba. He's he's worried about the renovated <laughs> office. <laughs> what if what if uh, Palano has a better office than me? <laughs> he wouldn't be worried about Cochin's counterfeiting operation, would he? He could be. <laughs> See? Not exactly a shining example of the perfect line of logic. He just punishes himself. He like. Slaps All right. Himself. Well, maybe it's this with the renovation. I don't think so. We know that the counterfeit bills were printed using the embassy's press. Yeah. But the necessary materials, such as the Bobbley's ink and paper, must have been hidden in a secure location. But what do you think would have happened if the renovation had begun? Well, he probably had to find a better hiding place or to get rid of it all. Right, so we can assume that the renovation was the cause of the plate and bills disposal. And the reason Mr. Cochin was killed as the ring leader of the smuggling operation. Based on what we know, who do you think it was who had the most to gain? Polano, Cochin, or Alba? Well, it wouldn't make sense that Cochin would have the most to gain if he's the smuggling leader. Right. Getting, getting whatever. The answer is Mr. Cochin himself. Um, he was the smuggling ring's boss, right? So maybe he had a lot to gain because of all the money? But in the end, he was killed. It's kind of sad, really. Hmm, I suppose there is some truth in that, although he was a huge butt, so not really. <laughs> no matter how much he may have profited in life, he really didn't gain much in his death. That being the case, there really is only one man who gained from everything. Would you say it's Polano or Alba? It wouldn't... Mm -hmm. Either would gain from it, to be honest. The answer is Ambassador Polano. You really think so? But he was the one who had his embassy's offices burned down. Cover. Perfect cover. And he lost his secretary. You really think he profited from any of that? Um, now that you mention it, perhaps not. Well, I thought maybe it could be the turn of the century and it's actually both of the embassy ambassadors. ambassadors. Like, and we have to get rid of head. both of their extraterritoriality. Yeah. It's the one person who has been erasing all evidence of the smuggling operation. From both embassies, the co-conspirator who was mopping up Ambassador Alba. Ambassador Alba had a very strong motive to kill Manny Cochin. Alright, well, well, Alba could conveniently place all the guilt on ugh. the smuggling onto Manny Cochin. Why would you ever get involved with that anyway? The cause of Ambassador Alba's agitation, the rotten treasure we may find, and the motive for killing Mr. Cochin, Miss Yu said it herself that she didn't kill anyone tonight. If we were to take her words at face value, then the reason for the Ambassador's nervousness can only be one thing. He didn't want us to discover the real circumstances under which Mr. Cochin was killed. Then you mean Ambassador Alba's the real killer? But I thought the two of them were friends. Maybe they were, but what if Mr. Cochin was the one who had first betrayed their friendship? Oh, I get it! Wasn't Mr. Cochin pushing really hard for Mr. Polano to be Ambassador after the reunification? Yes, and that was the real reason why he wanted to steal Alabast's Primadu statue. So Mr. Cochin hired Damask too to go steal it for him. But when Ambassador Alba found out what he was up to, he killed Mr. Cochin? It is definitely a possibility at this point. Those two really were thinking of no one but themselves. But the question now is, how did he do it? Ambassador Alba was in Alabast, but Mr. Cochin's body was discovered in Babal, right? Right. 
And that is what we must solve next. I believe we now understand why Ambassador Alba was so nervous and agitated. It must have something to do with where Mr. Cochin was killed. A place where the Alabastian ambassador was likely to meet the Babalese Mr. Cochin. A place where families can actually get along. <laughs> I'm willing to bet nobody will get that no, right. No, it's true. Nobody. No one, no one will. <laughs> it's possible they will. No, no one watches that. Uh, the place where Ambassador Alba happened to commit the murder is... It'd be hilarious if it was the Theatrum Neutralis and he was just like, we're gonna have the Steel Samurai kill him. Why are you going back and forth? Which one do you want? I mean... <laughs> do you I want Theatrum Neutralis? No, I thought that they were swapping bodies at the end. Well, so wait. Damask 2 comes to the office and he's like, I was under attack, so I killed him. Um, in defense or something yeah. stupid. Yeah. But if he hired Damask 2... This is talking about the murder of Manny Cochin, not Damask 2. But they probably go hand in hand, because if the bodies were swapped... I mean... Man they weren't bleh. swapped. The statues were swapped. Where did the ambassadors go after the epic party at the Theatre Neutralis? Because they got their pictures taken. Where did they go? Then they went off to their respective offices, I think. Oh. I don't know, then. Is it just... What? The only place that makes sense is here, at the Theatrum Neutralis. What? Here? The Goodwill event was being held here today, correct? So the only place that both of them would have been in is here. But if that's the case, then everything changes. The theater isn't exactly Alabastian land. So that wipes out one of those extraterritorial rights he has. It makes logical sense, in which case it is a reason for us to investigate further. So what should we check out? Let's see. I believe we should check the immigration records for both Alabast and Babal post haste. Babal's records should be easy to obtain, however, the problem will be Alabast. I wonder if they would allow us to see their records despite the order to vacate. I'm already one step ahead of you, Miles Edgeworth. Franziska. I have here the security footage from both Alabast and Babal. Let's go in, Franny. You would do well to take a look at its contents. Security footage data. We're on our fourth page of evidence now, I think. You move fast. Avon Karma strives to be perfect in every way. It's not in my nature to keep on retreating like this. I took the liberty of looking over the Babal investigation reports as well. From now on, you will make no excuse to back down or say that we can't solve this case! Ugh. I'm sorry about earlier. We won't be beaten. Because my cute little subordinate's going to try his very best, isn't he? Hasn't she patronized me enough already for a lifetime? So this video contains footage from Alabast's immigration screening area? In- I really hope that there's something in here that we can use. It's literally just gonna be, like, they watch it and it's just like, and he's just, like, beating him half to death. That would be funny. 521, there's a dude. There's yeah. that guy. Hey, it's Alba. He comes. Steel Samurai and Iron Infant. Which minute's footage should I examine? 521, 522, 523. Probably 522, but... I'm I didn't... What? I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how completely fooled I was by the way he carried himself. He had me fooled, too. According to the files I had sent for earlier, Ambassador Alba was a Kodopian hero. He saved the royal family from danger countless times. So what bothers me now is why would a man like that create a smuggling ring? Even with all the authority I have, I still haven't been able to figure out why. It sounds like the ambassador was a hero who was corrupted by evil. But no matter what happened in the past, we can't let the man he is now escape justice. I'm doing it to see if justice is served like a humble pie. Thanks. This man is the immigration officer who was on duty. He's making the exact same scary face that he was making a minute ago! Wait, we haven't met him. <laughs> no, like, for the last minute's footage. Oh. Wait, is it just me or is he blushing? It appears he's getting flustered around the ambassador. He is a good-looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's old! Why? So? <laughs> You're like, age is just a number. No. 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 I never said I that. <laughs> that's, that's my brain. I guess the ambassador is well-respected inside Alabast, too. You could say that, 
The guard doesn't appear to be capable of looking at the ambassador. He's dead. He also got killed. Visit Walt Disney World Bubba. Wait, wait. Um. What? Bef you before up, you read that. Pull up the organizer. I need to see how fat Damask 2 is. Um. Just hear what? me out. Just hear me out. Oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. In my brain, I was like, this guy has that's black rude. hair. No, but I was like, maybe that's Damask 2. No, that, then... I will just say this right now. That is not Damask 2. Okay. okay. <laughs> Phoenix Wright with his hair not spiked up. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a guard. Right. Those are poor... <laughs> Those are porsters. Porsters. <laughs> porsters. Those are posters of this country's tourist spots, though most are of gated waterland. I wonder if Alabastians in general like theme parks at all. The guard who stopped you has been in to gate waterland a number of times, apparently. I guess they don't have theme parks in Alabast, huh? No, they're too serious Maybe it's the bellboy, but he, uh, shaved. <laughs> on the outside, he may look like the Steel Samurai, but on the inside, it's just Larry. Other than the fact that it's that good for nothing, nothing else seems to be out of order. Wait, you know as well as I do that anything can happen if he's involved. You're not suggesting that someone else could be under that mask, are you? No, I don't think that. Yeah, because he signed the... yeah. Yeah. Just before he entered here, he gave me an autograph, so I'm certain it's Larry under there. Although the Iron Infant, why is it like a melted blob? It's standing on a blanket. Oh, yeah. I thought it was, like, the ugly witch of the waste that, like, gets deformed from the light bulb. Right. She's like, Bleh. Doesn't something about this slump's shape strike you as odd? Huh? Isn't it supposed to be this shape? No, there's clearly something odd about this bulge. If only we had the push cart itself, we could compare and confirm my hunch. Oh, so push cart data. The iron infant. Next, let us check the footage from Babal's security camera. I hope it shows us something good. Bluey, there wasn't a single sign of a suspicious person or anything. I like the pouty lip she has. That right there is the contradiction. Huh? Did I miss something? You didn't miss anything. Because there was nothing to miss. However, what is missing is the image of Mr. Cochin entering his own country. Didn't Larry exit through Babal though? No, he went that way. No, but I thought he came out of Babal and then towards Alabaster and gave us the autograph. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so I thought his- Wasn't his body found in Babal? It would appear that the true face of our final puzzle has finally revealed itself. In reality, what he did was he shot the wire, hooked Manny Cochin's shirt onto the wire, and went like, <laughs> Geronimo! <laughs> like, flew, hit, flung him down through the window, and then he just lands on the ground like, Bleh. I just heard the sound of a lot of guards coming our way. <laughs> oh. Whoa! Ambassador Alba. I thought I had asked for you and your group to vacate the premises, Mr. Edgeworth. Actually, I thought I should let you know that the theater sits on my country's soil. You've had your fun, and I've enjoyed our little game. I dare say that you've even achieved a new high score. However, once you've recorded a score, that same game can never be replayed again. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Your game is done, and it's game over. No. Objection! Where do you think you are going at this time of night? After admitting to my crime, I was overcome with regret. So I am heading to the airport now to return home. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. There are still too many issues we need to discuss with you. I can't let you do that. You can't stop me, Mr. Edgeworth, and you know it. Ah. Detective Gumshoe comes running in. Please, may I have a little bit of your time, Ambassador Alba? Ambassador Palano! Even just a teeny tiny bit is fine with me. The already strained relationship between our countries is in a precarious situation, you know. Very well, if you insist. Has Polano <laughs> seen him like this? That's the real question. <laughs> Polano is such a hero. He just shows up with all these guards like, Please don't leave. Our countries are in such bad shape, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's the thing where I'm like, has he seen him... Like, like transform like this, or is he just like this is perfectly normal? Like, <laughs> I'm not no sure. Idea. Also, yes, yeah, see, it's the butterfly that's on his chest, so that's oh. what you saw. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> that would be funny if he's like, this is weird. Alba looks younger now. <laughs> he's he doesn't he's look taller. Weird. He looks like... <laughs> he's opened his eyes. I didn't know he had green eyes. If he eyes. had a smaller nose, he looks like a reject from Star Wars Empire. The Imperial... <laughs> All officers. of the all of the officers and lieutenants that are like, we shall fire at will. Bring <laughs> And then they get launched into space. I will play just one more round with them and see what they want. Not that they'll get any farther. Ambassador Peleno. Mr. Edgeworth, all I wish is for the normalization of relationships between our two countries. Maybe someone will become But there is one person standing in the way of that dream. I I believe in you. You'll do what's right. Thank you for your vote of confidence. Now then, what is it you wanted to ask me about? I do have a flight to catch, after all. How'd you book a flight that quickly? It's called a private was, jet. Was he preparing for, like, okay, as soon as this thing's done, I'm gonna fly out at 3 a.m. <laughs> it's 2.11 right now, gotta get to the airport. He's not gonna get for security in time. <laughs> it's, it's, mid, it's after midnight. No one's in the airport. You always, okay, even if you arrive an hour early, you are pushing it, even if there's, like, no line for security. Yeah, you're pushing it if you don't know where you're going. That's if you have a whole hour. He doesn't also, have a whole he hour. He has to, to drive to the airport. He might have to go to customs as well if he's going back to his country. Or Maybe. no, do you only have to go through customs once? How does that work? If you go, say I fly. If you're going to a different country from an airport, you have to go through customs. Well, right, but say I come to, uh, let's say I go from America to Germany. I fly there. I get, I arrive, I go through customs. Mm -hmm. If I fly back to America, do I have to go through customs again going, oh. going in the German airport, or do I do it after I land in America? Probably in the German airport. Okay, then yeah, th he has no time. Yeah. He's, not, he's not getting through the airport in uh, <laughs> no 45 minutes. No way! <laughs> one question. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to miss my flight. <laughs> so I'm afraid I'm going to have to limit you to just one question. That's more than enough, because I only have one question anyway. I want to hear your alibi about how you couldn't have killed Mr. Manny Cochin. Oh, I see. You seem to have a good hand this time around. This should be fun. How tall is this dude? He's tall. This really is the very last chance we have to bring him down. I won't allow even an atom-sized contradiction to slip by. Ba, 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 ba. Ambassador Alba's alibi. Frankly, I still don't understand why I'm being placed under suspicion here, even though I snapped my cane in half <laughs> and, and <laughs> revealed this facade. Under your hypothetical scenario, Mr. Cochin and I were fellow smugglers. But to get to the point, I was in Alabas the whole time. <coughs> So it's simply not possible for me to have killed him in Babal. That is my alibi. Well, that was an easy alibi to fix. So that is your alibi. That is correct. It's simply not possible for me to have committed a crime in Babal. Now that that's cleared up, I'd appreciate it if you would move out of the way. Hold it. I said, hold it. What is it this time? I thought I told you I'd only allow one question. Hmph. <laughs> you did. But you still have yet to really answer my one question. What? Until you tell us the truth, I will refuse to budge an inch from where I'm standing. <laughs> Very well. I'll play with you just a little bit longer. Miles Edgeworth, as my subordinate and representative of the country's prosecutors. You are forbidden to lose! Of course. That is something I've understood from the start. What happens if you do lose anyway? We've never then done the, that. Then the truth is lost for all eternity. No, like what happens and then the book though? Closes. If you, oh. That's what happens. It's like enough. The truth is lost for all eternity, and like the book, like a book closes. It's I like think. the ending of and Cinderella, it but this. it's like bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except she, this like doesn't go to the ball. <laughs> She's like, eh, it's fine. I can hang out at home. And the prince remains single if because all the Cinderella, other people were terrible. If Cinderella was really an introvert who didn't like parties. She's like the ball. That sounds terrible. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm fucking out with my mice. And the prince, <laughs> the prince is like. Eh. And then the prince is like, all these girls suck. Yeah, I they're hate so women. petty. <laughs> No, literally, like, can you imagine being a prince? Like, all these people want to marry you for your status and money. They don't yeah. care about you. Maybe you're hot, but, like, no one cares about your actual personality. I mean, he is very charming. <laughs> I do kind of want to watch Cinderella 3, because I've heard he's hilarious in that. <laughs> Cinderella 3 intrigues me a little bit. It does. We can watch that sometime. Anyway, that guy's the one who ordered my father killed, isn't he? Yes, I believe so. The goal of the first Yadagarasu was the capture of the smuggling ring's leader. My 
father and Uncle Bad, their legacy will live on through me! So that's why we've got- we've just gotta catch him, okay? We will, I promise. Now, Ambassador Alba, let's have at the truth now, shall we? <laughs> no matter how many times you ask, my answer remains the same. Thus starts the longest cross-examination, like, ever. We have to cross Dana in for a very long time. We'll be starting that next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope to see you next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.